Hey guys, Nathan from Modern Rifleman here, and we're going to try something a little bit new today. If you're familiar with ModernRifleman.net, my site, you've probably seen my written reviews and articles about any number of different topics, uh, but I've always been mainly a writer, and videos, any videos that I do have really been used to embed into my reviews or uh, whatever it may be. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on, on your perspective here, while I was at the range uh, a couple weeks ago, a gentleman approached me who had seen the videos. He'd been listening or watching a playlist on, on YouTube of different cans and had come across uh, one of the, one of the uh, shooting videos that I've done in the past. Unfortunately, what he had not seen was the full write-up. So, while he had seen the shooting, he hadn't actually gotten the full picture from me because traditionally my write-ups have a whole lot more information than the shooting videos. So this ga this gave me a little bit of a pause because I wondered how many folks had, just like him, had seen the videos, really didn't have any context because it's just me shooting uh, with the, you know with a, a particular can or with a rifle or a handgun. But there's n there's no commentary there, and so the information's not all that valuable for most people. So I got to thinking, and we're going to try something new here. While Modern Rifleman is always going to be primarily a written outlet, I think there's an opportunity for me to give you guys just a little bit more info in the videos, so that if you're like that gentleman, you're going to get just a little bit more value out of out of whatever video you may watch. I'm not going to do this for every review, um, but I think that especially with some of the, the silencers that I, I get in from Silencer Shop, this makes some sense. Especially if we're going to talk about some of the features and then, then kind of lead into the shooting. So, essentially what my plan is here, uh, moving forward, will be I'll show off the silencer, I'll show off the features, add some shooting, come back for a little bit of a, a plus minus or a pros and cons type discussion and then cut it off there. Anybody else who wants more information can go to the written uh, review which will be in the description like it always has been and get the whole rundown, the whole multi-paragraph, super detailed discussion about the can. We'll see how it goes. It may also translate into some of my Firearm reviews, we'll just have to see. But to kick things off, I've got these brand new cans from the folks at Q. We've got, in this hand, got the full Nelson. And in this hand, got the half Nelson. Both of these just recently came in from Silencer Shop, hot off the presses. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, here in a moment, take a quick look at the specs, and then I'll be right back with some shooting, and then finally we're going to hit some key points before we close this up. So without further ado, let's get into those uh, the specs and, and, and what comes in the box, and then go from there. All right, so regardless of whether you buy the full or the half Nelson, they're packaged identically. They come in these very eccentrically designed boxes um, with the Q Seacoast Wrestling Alliance and a picture of Ken, Kevin Brittingham's father, on the front uh, sporting what appear to be wrestling robes. That's because they are. I'm going to go ahead and slide one of the sleeves off here and you get an even more revealing photo of Ken wearing his wrestling guard. But this is what we've come to expect from Q. Uh, <laughs> they've got character. Opening them up reveals silencers themselves, and they're very well packed here. This is something that I, I it reminds me a lot of how how Sig does it and how they started doing uh, their suppressor uh, packaging when Kevin was there, and uh, it's. It, you certainly feel like you're getting something that's at least got some value to it. 
The silencers come in these pouches, and I will tell you what, they are firmly planted in the foam here. They're not going anywhere. And on the back, I'm going to go ahead and pull both of them out. On the back of each pouch, you do have the option to... I guess you could, you could, they've got, they've got molly loops, so you could, you could put those on a, on a pack if you'd like, or on a vest or whatever, but uh, the, it's, the options there, they're, they're certainly not styled like most tactical gear or anything like that. Also inside the packaging, kind of hidden at the bottom, is a pouch. Once again, we've got Ken, this time wearing the wrestling mask. It's easy to miss, even though you open it up and it like it's one of the first things you see. It's it's pretty. I mean, it's you know you almost kind of think, oh, that that's just the bottom of the box. No, it's not true. A few other things in here: stickers, instructions, the fine print, which is just kind of some warnings, the legal mumbo jumbo stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and move some of these this packaging out of the way. Sorry, sorry, Ken, I'm gonna, gonna move you. Alright, so I've gone ahead and cleared out the boxes and I've zoomed the camera a little bit so you guys can get a closer look at these two silencers. Let's go ahead and take them out of the pouches. The one thing I noticed when I first got these from Silencer Shop is that the pouches were they were pretty tight. It was actually took a little bit of tugging to get the can out. Um, clearly these things are made for these suppressors. Now that I've used them a little bit. Not quite the same story. There's our full Nelson. And here's the half. Now I'm going to set them side by side so that you can get a good look at the relative length of each one. Frame there for you. Alright, so as you can see, run away on me. As you can see, the half Nelson is certainly not half of a full Nelson. I don't think any of us realistically expected that, um, but it is a good bit shorter. That has both some benefits in terms of handling and some consequences in terms of performance. We'll get into that a little bit later in the shooting and then the uh, written review, so I won't go into that too much here. The one thing to note is that the full Nelson is a full size 30 caliber suppressor. Uh, measured, it is 8 and 3 quarters inches long uh, and 1.75 inches in diameter. Now, the half Nelson is the same 1.75 in diameter, but it's 6 and 3 quarters in inches in length. So it's an exact two inches shorter than the full Nelson. It, the diameter is noteworthy because most suppressors that these are competing against, or most in the category, are one and a half inches in diameter. So have one and three quarters means more volume. But impressively, it doesn't mean, in this case, additional weight. These are some of the lightest suppressors in the 30 caliber realm. The half Nelson is 12.2 ounces, and the full Nelson is 16.6 ounces. Those are measured, not listed, straight off my postal scale, so you can trust those. I know some, some companies sometimes don't always have those numbers right. So that, that, that those are true weights that I have measured, so very impressive. Uh, it's not often that you find a full length, full size, full performance, 30 caliber silencer that is that light. And then of course, a 12 ounce 30 caliber can with this kind of performance, is, it's, it's, it's impressive. Now, these are both fully titanium, so some people might say, well, that that means that, you know, it's not as durable, whatever, but Q does rate, rate these things for 300 wind mags, so I'm not, not overly worried about it.
unlike their soon to be or coming coming soon brethren the full and half Nelson are thread mount suppressors so you can see the close look there threads but these threads are a little bit different than what you might typically be used to somewhat like the SIG suppressors that you know Kevin Brittingham worked on in the past and some of the folks that Q have worked on uh, these have a tapered thread um, so they are your standard 5 8 by 24 threads just like the vast majority of 30 cal silencers out there but these do have a taper I've found that that isn't going to cause any problems on any of the barrels I've had but it does worry some folks because they're they're, they're worried that they won't get good shoulder engagement uh, or that the suppressors won't mount up correctly for me it hasn't been an issue uh, the one thing that that does probably mean and we haven't seen these rifles out there yet but I'm quite confident that the honey badger and the fix will both have tapered barrels so um, I like it in theory it means that it helps to give you better uh, lockup with the suppressor mounted it should help to keep you know zero uh, it's consistent mount up so it, I don't see it as a big issue it's also worth noting that these have 22 millimeter wrench flats on the back so you can really snug them down to your rifle I've used them I like that feature uh, because let's just say I'm at times a little bit paranoid about about things like that, about having a can back off. So, set them back down. So, we've kind of gone over the threads, the weight, the length, um, really most of the important things. The other thing that uh, is worth noting is that this has a PVD finish. So, it's kind of like a few other different brands of silencers out there. Uh, some magazine manufacturers, like, like Beretta for their M9, I use PVD as well. It's a very slick finish. I have noticed that it does, it is pretty easy to, to scratch at times, or at least to make it look like look like the suppressor's scratch. Uh, but, but more notably, it also tends to, if you've got dirty hands and you're handling it, it'll show the oils and stuff. I don't care at all. Some people might, but then again, honestly, I hate to say it, I know it drives some people nuts, these things are tools, so let's use them that way. Um, but other than that, I think it pretty well covers everything. We'll get to the shooting, and then we'll come back for a quick rundown and closing.
Alright, so we've gone through the specs, we've seen the shooting, so the question is, which one should I go for? The half Nelson or the full Nelson? My recommendation is that if you've got an SBR such as this guy, I believe this is an eight and a half inch barrel, uh, Palmetto State Armory upper, I would go with the full version. Now, it seems counterintuitive because this is a short barreled rifle and most people want their short barreled rifles to be, well, short. That's true, but the full Nelson is noticeably quieter with 300 blackout than the half. I think if you're going, it's also not that much heavier, at least not noticeably so. So when I've got the rifle shouldered, honestly, having a full titanium suppressor at the front really isn't that big a deal to me, uh, even if it is this large. I mean, it's, it's still quite light. So it's quieter, noticeably so, with the 300 blackout. I'm going to recommend SBR guys, especially those shooting 300 blackout, to go with the full Nelson. It's actually, quite honestly, probably one of the quietest 300 blackout cans on the market right now. Very close, both in design and in performance, to the SIG SRD 762 Ti that I was just blown away by. That being said, the Half Nelson also has its place in the world. Here, I have it on my behemoth. I mean, this thing's this thing's pretty heavy. It's a large rifle. PTR 91 A3R from Atlantic Firearms. The reason I think it makes sense here is, no, it's not the quietest. I mean, certainly the full Nelson is quieter on this particular rifle, but to the shooter, that's not so noticeable. Part of that is because the half Nelson generates less back pressure. That's important for a number of reasons. First off, the back pressure leads to the rifle, the system, whatever you whatever you want to call it, being louder at the shooter's ear. Because the because what it essentially does is kicks gas back down the barrel in this case because the this gun doesn't actually have a gas system so to speak, but the delayed blowback uh, it kicks the gas back down the barrel and out the ejection port. That means that you get a lot of port pop with high back pressure cans. While I won't necessarily call the Half Nelson a an especially low back pressure silencer, it's it's not bad. I mean, it's certainly among the better options. Certainly when I had the full Nelson mounted on this rifle, I would say it's it's noticeable. The other thing with really any any rifle, but especially this PTR, is that if you've got that added gas pressure coming back down the barrel, it's going to speed up your bolt in a very noticeable way. So you're going to get more felt recoil, and that's kind of kind of taking away from the whole experience of having a, a suppressor. So that being said, on a full caliber or a full power 308, 300 wind mag, whatever you may have, I'm going to say go with the half Nelson. Now that being said, if you've got a 300 wind mag and it's a bolt gun, then it's not really going to matter. But gas operated or semi-automatic, uh, full powered rifles, I'm saying the half Nelson. As I mentioned in the opening, the full review will be in the description. Once I finish it, this may beat it up, so, or <laughs> beat it to YouTube. So, with that being said, you might have to wait a day or two, but it'll be there. If you have any questions, be sure to post those in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this new little rundown in addition to the shooting videos that I traditionally do. Thanks.